hi there my dear friends fellow africans welcome again this is another time when we come together as africans to seek solutions for african problems uh but all in all my dear friends before i proceed i want you to hear this a uh, few words from professor pierre lumumba about the richness of the continent of africa maybe many of us we don't know how africa is so rich but let us listen to this speech few words uh, from Professor Pierre Lumumba uh, to cover how much Africa uh, is so blessed in every place in Africa. Everybody kind of knows that Africa have. has all the things that are desirable. And if you doubted that Africa had everything, you start to look at your African map. If you want gold, you go to Johannesburg, up South Africa. In fact, the other name of Johannesburg is Igoli, which means gold. If you want diamonds, you climb a little and go to Namibia and to Botswana and to Lesotho and you find diamond there. And if you want uranium, you just go to Zimbabwe. And if you are tired of looking at uranium in Zimbabwe, you climb the ladder a little and you go to Zambia and you are confronted with copper. And if you are tired of copper, just rise to the Democratic Republic of Congo and you'll ask yourself the question, what was God thinking when he created Congo? What mineral is not there? Everything is in Congo except nothing. That is Africa for you. And when you move out of Congo, you go to the armpit of Africa as if things can only be hidden in the armpit. You find oil in Equatorial Guinea and you find oil in Angola. And as if oil was condemned to reside in that part of the world, you find oil off the shores of Gabon. You find oil off the shores of Benin. You find oil off the shores of Cameroon. You find oil off the shores of Nigeria. You find oil off the shores of Ghana. And if you are tired of oil and you now want to go into agriculture, you go to Ghana and when you are looking for cocoa and before you see cocoa, you meet gold. And if you rise a little up there, you go to Cote d'Ivoire you meet Coco and if you are tired of West Africa and you go to West Africa, come to my Kenya, you meet tea, you meet coffee and you go to Tanzania and to Ethiopia. What did God not put in Africa? That is the continent that everybody wants. That is the continent. Well, also I have been convinced to listen this another uh this short words from the pastor from ghana about the kind of people that we have in the continent yes the tribal people and the citizens the first group of people are the idiots the idiots are a group of people or individuals who don't care about other people in another group they will be with the group whether for good or for evil if the group is doing evil they will support the evil if the group is doing good, they will support the group. If the group is doing evil, whatever the group will do, whether it is evil or not, they don't care, they will stand and support it. Nothing will change their mind. And the tribal people are a group of people who look down upon other people. Not that they are tribalistic, but they look down upon other people. They think they are better than other people. And the third group of people, according to the Greeks, are the citizens. According to the Greeks, the citizens are people who think about the next generation. They think about the next group of people who will come and inherit them. So whatever they are doing, they do it for the benefit of the next generation. People think politics is dirty, but politics is actually not dirty. It is dirty people who make politics dirty. There is difference between party politics and national politics. Party politics is you belong to party X, Y, and Z. And you support them for good, for the evil, and for the ugly. And you, you will become sometimes a tool in their hands to promote evil. One of the basic explanations or definition of politics is the making of decisions in the management and distribution of resources for the public good. The management 
of our resources for the benefit of all. Politics will determine how your birth should be managed. Politics determined when your children can start school. Politics determined what kind of educational system our children will have. Politics determined what kind of job you can have. Politics will determine your family life and your family development. Politics will determine your financial lifestyle. Politics also determine your retirement plan from the age of 60. Politics determines that. Politics determine your employment lifestyle. Politics will determine your death management. From the cradle to the grave is determined by politics. From birth to death, your life is regulated by politics. So if you sit down and you are saying that country broke or country no broke, I dare inside. I don't care. I'm not concerned about it. Then literally you are saying that from your birth, your education, your financial life, your employment life, your economic life, your, your, your retirement life, and your death management life, you have sold your birthright to somebody to regulate it for you and you don't care about anything about your life. That is why your vote is important. So sometimes as you heard that we have all kind of resources we have everything but why africa we are here where we are and we are still behind of others there are some countries that have nothing but they are beyond of us uh, there are some countries even continents that are not rich compared to africa but they are moving forward for instance as you speak today about some of Asian countries like the countries such as uh, South Korea, uh, Northern Korea, uh, Malaysia, Thailand are moving faster than Africa. But in the years of 1960, they are behind of Africa. But today they are moving very, very fast. The countries such as Qatar, such as uh, United Arab Emirates, we can't compare with Africa. So, what's long we have, we Africans made so that we can't realize and uh, do right things for our mother continent? That's the question that we must ask ourselves. So, but all in all, my dear friends, first of all, you know, these other countries, they decide to do what's right for their country or for the continent but Africa we are relying on politics we are we are focusing especially those who are want to read us they are focused on uh, politics about elections yes we know that politics is what decide our lives but what kind of politics Africa we need we need economic politics the, the politics that is going to change the economy of African one Africans instead of talking for too long talking more uh, promising something that is not possible and sometimes uh, I think our readers maybe we need to read by example there are some readers who are doing very well we are talking about Thomas Sankara it is almost 30 years ago more than 30 years ago but still today we are talking about Thomas Sankara we are talking about Kwame Nkrumah so our current readers must ask themselves how they can be more than Kwame Nkrumah how can they can be more than Thomas Sankara what can they do for this continent for our countries so as we look around the people are just lamenting the people are just crying we have all kind of resources we have everything that can help us African to liberate yourself so why Africa why this is happening to our mother country that's the question that is tough for Africans to answer we need to come together to speak with one voice to know how we can utilize these resources of course next time we'll come to speak about maybe education system that we have maybe this education system that we have they are focusing us to to think about uh, politics instead of, I mean, uh, election politics instead of 
uh, economic politics. We need now to move from election politics into uh, po economic politics. So we need to build our continent. We need to bring changes to our mother continent. We need to provide employment to our people, to create job opportunities for our people. So this is what Africans, especially this generation, need to do. Everyone in your own position, try to do something. Try to bring changes where you are. Of course, I know there are some obstacles, there are some conflicts. I always I speak about conflict in Africa. I know how this conflict undermine our development. So, but why we can't come together as Africans? What's wrong with us? We are not. We are not. We are not uh, kerosene in the water that you can't mix up. We are, we, we are Africans. We can come together and speak about our problems and say we are fighting for too long. We are destroying our continent for too long. We are destroying our countries for too long. Let us keep our side, our differences. Let us come together. Let us say someone, you know, in these positions, there's the position that we can't. Uh, all of us, we can't occupy the position, for instance, the, the presidents or president. It is difficult for, her, for all of us to be a president. We must accept that one of us will lead us, maybe for five years, maybe for two years, maybe for ten years. We must accept that and we must recognize and understand that not all of us will become the presidents. So our political uh, parties must have politics of economic politics that will liberate this continent of Africa. Of course, and I'm happy that uh, we young people, now we are starting to awakening and we are starting to speak about economy of Africa, about the unity of Africa, about the peace in our mother continent. That's all over. Wherever there is something that is uh, difficult for us, we can come together and negotiate and speak and share our thoughts and the ideas on how we can do, how we can face these difficulties. So, my dear friends, thank you for watching. Please, 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 if you have anything, please comment in, comment in the comment section, write anything, because we are just seeking solution. We, we will read your comment and others will read also, understand that you, maybe we have make mistake here. Let us correct these mistakes that we have made maybe in previous so thank you